Thank you for coming here. It's uh, quite a chance for me because I was just studying here a few years ago and now I'm talking here. So it's quite nice. So first, something more about me. I started to use Linux in maybe 2013 or something like that. But it was just a little bit because I didn't have much time. I ha had other studies and stuff. But uh, I continued to use it and I became much more interested uh, maybe in 2018 on this university and from some events I man managed to become a Red Hat intern and then I'm starting a job in September about all about accessibility in Fedora and similar distributions. During the years I was mainly using Arch Linux because for visual impaired we usually want to have the fixes as fast as possible and we don't like waiting for stuff. <laughs> but uh, I also, also use Fedora and um, I was admiring Debian and such as well, but because there's a lot uh, of specific terms in this area, so let's get them out of the way. So first, a screen reader is a piece of software which basically tells you what's on the screen, what's the label of this button, is, or is this piece of text a link or a heading or something else, or is it something unknown, and it just basically reads you the text on the screen. Of course, there's no magic, so it can't describe, for example, a random image because we don't have uh, enough AI capabilities as of now, <laughs> of course. But it's a very important piece of software for a visually impaired. Then we have uh, the speech synthesis, which is the voice, uh, which you maybe heard or you definitely will heard here in a few moments, and it basically only says what some other part of the accessibility stack t tells it. So it's not much intelligent, but it's a very important piece of the story as well. Then there was actually a one very useful special device called a braille display, which allows the visually impaired to read one line about usually 40 or 80 characters in braille letters and it's very use useful because sometimes the audio system breaks and you need to work with the computer anyway so it's uh, very important to have uh, some alternative output. And let, of course, then something a little more technical. There, for Linux, the main accessibility system is called ASP2, which basically allows to the applications to describe them, themselves in a form of a tree of some accessible objects and the screen readers can do some queries about this tree. Well, the situation for Roger Impart isn't so bad. We can do a lot of things. 
for example, naturally we can use the text interfaces and the console because it's just text usually. So it's pretty well accessible by even uh, the text only consoles are accessible using speak up and friends but these uh, kernel modules aren't in every distribution on the world so we can't use this support everywhere but that's not a, such a big deal because using the emulators is good as well Web browsers have a pretty good accessibility support as well. Firefox and Chrome-based things have probably the most advanced because there are pretty big cooperation behind them, so they have the developer hours for this. And even Chrome now works on Linux. It didn't a few years ago, but it does now. Of course, writing some emails or instant messaging is uh, accessible as well because Thunderbird is just fine and things like speech and, and friends as well. Of course, programming editors, there are many of them, but not every of these is accessible as much. It's quite ironic, but uh, Visual Studio Code has a quite good accessibility support, including IntelliSense and things like that, and they are actually working on the story in this area, as you may know from the release notes. But Eclipse is good as well, but it's quite complicated, so I'm personally using VS Code uh, playing some multimedia files is doable as well because things like VLC or the other players are just usually simple enough that so they work. And LibreOffice isn't uh, bad as well, but they have some regressions and which ones are the worst can will be seen later. And of course, managing files, uh, we can do this as well. There's nothing special. But there are some things which can be done, but they are quite hard. For example, sound editing can be done, but uh, the most accessible Linux thing for this is Audacity, but there are still some inaccessible areas, so it's, it's sad, but it's true. Doing some optical character recognition is a thing which we need quite often, but it's not comfortable because either the application isn't much supported and there's only a single developer behind it and similar maintenance related things or it would be useful to use a scanner with some of these applications but it isn't. And yeah, then there's the story with reading PDF files. <laughs> Some of these can be read by the web browser readers or events or something like that, but it's not something we much like. And of course, not every PDF is accessible. There are so many just image-only PDFs in the world. Of course, playing games is, oh, it's generally, issue on Linux, but for Visual Impact there's much smaller selections of games. You can probably get some going through Vine, but it's complicated and not done so often. And yeah, you know, if you want to create a presentation, you have to basically use 
something like Pandoc or similar because creating in something in impress is painful and uh, reading it is even worse. <laughs> so, which problems we have? I would put them in two categories. The first is uh, the small problems, which are basically missing labels and such. So if we look on this GNOME weather thing and try to use it with a screen reader. GTK menu GTK menu There's the first example because it's some menu button, but no user actually is interested in the technical GTK class, I think, but <laughs> there's no A11Y label, so it's, it's a quite over-forgotten over thing, but it's so easy to fix, honestly. I fixed many of these uh, issues in GNOME settings already. <laughs> Welcome to weather. Of course, but... Then there are more critical F4. issues because if we look Window. to the GNOME calendar thing. C overview panel text. Hello. C A L. Come, come on. Come on. Window. Come on, read. Show up, please. C C. A. Is there not a... Okay, no, can I just... Of course, <coughs> it... L. Of course, when you are presenting something... Sheet, sheet one, it, table with one million for the... Oh, no, I don't want for this, of course. So, basically, if you... Want to use the current version of uh, GNOME Calendar in GNOME 42 as a visual impact? You can't because the days are reported just as some overlays or something absolutely inaccessible, and you can't even get out of them. So there are sometimes more pressing issues than than a missing label. Even in the weather applications, it's basically impossible to, to read, read the weather, so it's quite sad. And much more work will be needed to fix it. But because there are actually some Impaired Linux users who don't want to fiddle with the configuration for hours. With some friends, we began creating a project called Fagora, which is uh, a cute, quite stupid name. The, the Linux distribution is based on Fedora, so it's the first part of the name, and Agora, which is a conference for visually impaired lovers of IT and stuff. Uh, but if we can think of a better name or use, just tell us because we need a better name than this. So, and what we did, in, we actually did uh, quite a few things there. We configured the screen reader to start automatically after login, installed some applications, added a much more keyboard shortcuts than the default, so it's the controls are more straightforward and quicker for everyone. We as well started packaging some applications like the previously mentioned Lyos and uh, those other OCR stuff. Uh, 
Um, it's probably everything I was to figure out, yeah. And what you can help. First, please, everyone, <laughs> don't break things that uh, already work. It may be simple if I say it this way, but it happens too often. And I saw, for example, a very critical bug in GTK. So every GTK4 application crashed with a running screen reader, so it wasn't nice at all. And this thing actually got to a federal release. But it's fixed now, fortunately. So if these things wouldn't repeat, it would be very, very nice. When you are designing some user experience, you, you should think at least a little about us because sometimes it's just a few lines in a, the UI file to, which can make our lives so easier. So if you are using the icons, oh yeah, use them, but don't forget the accessibility labels. It's not so hard. <laughs> and you, if you are doing something more involved and you are not sure what to do about the experience, just ask because there's so many impaired, visually impaired who can help actually and they want to help but they just don't know on time and they are then surprised <laughs> about anything. And if you have some time and you want to really see how your application behaves, there's nothing more exact than uh, turning Orca, the Linux screen reader on and just using the application with the keyboard and maybe with your eyes closed. <laughs> It's quite interesting, I think. <laughs> and of course, uh, tell the others about us because when more developers know about these issues, then there will be probably less work for people like me. Uh, I actually don't believe it, but I can at least hope. <laughs> so it's the end. And if you have some questions, just go forward. just uh, turn or the screen reader or before the change, test the experience with key the keyboard, then do your work and test the thing again. And if it behaves it's reasonably, then you probably didn't break anything. Yeah, of, there are some cases which are really, really wrong and should be automated, I think, but there are too many special cases. So humans are still needed, but yeah, we are working on some linting checks or something like this. We don't know where, but we are thinking about it. Well, the foundations actually work pretty good, but the application developers have some work uh, as well because if you, for example, create a button and set it an icon, which is simple enough, then you as a um, visually impaired, you just hear that uh, GTK image button and nothing else. And if you add the lab accessibility label, it's 
It's quick and it helps us. I think. I would like to ask, uh, how, how do you feel uh, bugs uh, on software as uh, a user which uh, uses it different way than, than most people? So, uh, because I think most of creators of that software never seen uh, impaired user uh, using their creation. So they have no idea how it's used and yeah. are not even able to test uh, that thing. So. How can you uh, show them it's it unusable for you because yeah, you I know understand. exactly what's wrong, but yeah, I understand. they never seen that. How, how, how can you report that? Yeah, well, you can be as detailed as you can. So I, we usually describe, at least for a new project, all the steps uh, for a production of the issue. but and in some projects it's enough and the developers uh, use the steps and uh, find out what's wrong and agree with us but yeah you have to be detailed and uh, you have to be prepared to help the developers because you are right the majority of them didn't see a visually impaired person in their lives so you have to be prepared for a longer, longer conversation under the issue. Of course, you have to use the correct reporting channel, which is usually okay, but some issue trackers are quite annoying. For example, Red Hat Bugsla isn't the best of these, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, ju yeah, just talk to me. I will be there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.